from here on out. Well, Aman Chauhan is uh, with us. He's a uh, fund manager at Abacus Asset Management. Uh, uh, Aman, uh, good to have you with us here. Uh, always appreciate it. You Hi. know, I, uh, I trust you sort of uh, looked at some of the data that I presented and you're listening in. Just wanted your thoughts, Aman. How would you as an investor look at uh, what companies are saying and the data itself? Uh, well, the data that we have and what companies are telling us, they are all hoping that uh, we have entered the festive season and so far the festive season has gone off well. Uh, we'll be soon getting into state elections, uh, three large states, MP, Chhattisgarh and Rajasthan in November and December, and then we have the central elections. And everyone is hoping that ahead of the elections, there is a uh, money flowing into the economy, the cash in the system goes up, uh, there is a feel-good factor which comes in directly or indirectly, and hence, uh, nobody is expecting credit cards to go up. Uh, we have been pretty positive on the microfinance first uh, segment. Uh, we have portfolio exposure there. And the commentary there is pretty strong. Uh, they have just come out of a cycle. Uh, it's been uh, almost one, one and a half years of up cycle, and they expect at least two to three years that up cycle will stay. So our data point so far is not suggesting any, uh, you can say, alarming signs or red signals, at least as of now. Mm, okay. Uh, Aman, to just press on that point. Hi, good afternoon, Surabhi here. I've been uh, just to press on that point. In your all cap uh, strategy, you have exposure to banks and also some NBFC stocks. Uh, I saw SBI, Axis Bank, ICICI among the blue chip bank names. And then there's, I think, IFL Finance among the key holdings. Incrementally, when you look to deploy additional money from here on, within financials, where would you go? You know, uh, Prashant presented one strong debate that, that clearly is now, you know, gaining traction. The other debate is, of course, on, on margins, whether the best of the margin expansion is behind us and now what happens from here on, you know, cost of funds, etc. So going forward for the next, let's say, one or two years, if you take that view, where would you put fresh money to work in financials? So uh, we buy the argument that the best of the margins is behind us and uh, the margins can uh, squeeze from these levels, but they still be healthy. Uh, we would focus on NBFCs, but the larger NBFCs. So you need to be a top two player in the segment that you're operating. So we'll not look at small NBFCs. And within banks, uh, obviously, the top banks will continue to do well. So focus will be there, even for PSU or private. Uh, go for size, go for people who have scale, uh, both banking as well as NBFC. So that's the strategy going ahead uh, as far as the financials are concerned. Hi, Aman. Uh, good afternoon. Uh... Aman, I wanted to ask you about the textile space. You know, I, I don't know whether you'll have exposure, but normally you'll get into these niche segments. And the trend that we have seen is the commentary that came in from the managements at the end of first quarter is they're very optimistic about the second quarter. And more importantly, US is not getting into a recession. Well, the globe is saying that's uh, not the best news because the central bankers will go on hiking rates. But some of these sectors where destocking has taken place Suddenly, the inventory levels are very low in the United States. So textiles could get a bit of a booster shot. Are you all in that camp? Yes, we are in that camp. And it's not just these talking, what is also helping these companies is that the cotton prices are off their highs. So from, yes. say, 40, 50,000 rupees a bale, it hit a high of lack, and now it's back to around 50, 60,000 levels. And it's looking like it will stay or go further down. And the margin pressure they all faced last year, both because volumes didn't pick up and there were higher cotton prices, were all going to reverse. And that is getting reflected in the companies also. So for the next year, year and a half, they're all pretty hopeful that from a low base, uh, this segment can do well. Domestic retailing is also sounding positive that from 2Q onwards, they will be, uh, demand should pick up. But that's more of a hope that uh, India will do well and there's going to be elections and things will pick up. But one also needs to bear in mind that the 2Q numbers might not reflect this because of the Diwali. Last year, Diwali was slightly ahead than what it is this year. So there is going to be one, two months of uh, sales, which will get more captured in the 3Q than in 2Q. But overall, yeah, from these levels, even our portfolio companies and the commentary that we speak to management, they're all hoping that both exports as well as domestics will start to pick up both top line as well as margins. Mm. All right, you know, I'll be putting out a piece later today on Editor's Roundtable as well on the textile space and why some of these stocks are very excited. The U.S. inventory levels are low, managements are positive, and as Aman said, the hope is that the spreads from here on will improve as well as cotton prices cool off and maybe yarn prices could stabilize a little bit. And hopefully mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, long-awaited structural shift of manufacturing of textiles in India, I mean, yeah, that okay. kind of picks up uh, in a pretty uh, big yeah. way as mm -hmm. well, right? From countries... 
Sorry. Yeah, a couple no? of more points as well, but yeah. that will be for Etta's round table. No, there's, a, there's an FTA that I, could be probably signed with the UK as yeah. well. Currently, out of the 22 billion that they import, India accounts for just a billion, so just around 5% odd, while China, Pakistan, Bangladesh are far bigger. Mm -hmm. So if that FTA is signed, then the disadvantage that we have, you know, it puts us, uh, makes us more competitive. But more on that at 4.30. Well, that's a tease, but you gave out a little bit more. That <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> All right, well, that's uh, 4.30 coming up. Uh, 90 points lower. 19,294 is where we are at right now. Uh, Aman, tell us, I mean, uh, talk to us about uh, what you're doing in terms of uh, single stocks. Just give us some ideas. Uh, where are you being opportunistic? Because you guys are opportunistic. You know, you see large moves... Uh, uh, un sometimes unwarranted and uh, you guys uh, uh, sort of go in. So what are you seeing out there? We have been pretty choosy on the IPO front. <clears throat> Going ahead, we are seeing good opportunities in some of the new IPOs that is coming in. So that is something which has been a focus area for us. Uh, we have also selectively participated in some of the uh, recent PE exit deals that has come in. Though not in a big way, but uh, selectively. Uh, some liquidity has gone on that front also. So off late, same in the last one month, this has been the two, you can say, new activities that we have been looking and focusing on. Okay, got that, Aman. Uh, let me also ask you about uh, probably what was the sector of the week, and that is this, uh, you know, category of space stocks. We used to call them defense stocks earlier. And then the market figure that a lot of these companies are doing a lot of work for ISRO. And then, you know, they shot up. I, I was looking at their profile. These are, in terms of revenue, they're not very big companies. From, you know, some 200 crores, I think, Paris uh, uh, Defense, going up to 800 crores if you're looking at Astra Microwave. Uh, I mean, full year revenue, that is. Now, stocks have gone up anywhere between 20% and 18%, 90%. So, for investors who want to understand this better, and, you know, they, they, they're convinced of the opportunity because these are long-term suppliers to ISRO or DRDO, I mean, on, on the defense side. How do you wrap your head around valuations? What's a band that would make, make sense uh, for an for a actual investor, uh, not a trader in and out on momentum? In the near term, there's complete momentum in these stocks. And as we saw it a few days back, these Chandrayaan costed around 600 or 650 uh, CRs, but the market of companies supplying to Chandrayaan went up by almost 40, 50,000 crores. Right? So that's completely crazy. It is a good opportunity. Uh, these are good companies doing well. But at the same time, we have to see that this is not something which is very scalable. We don't have a satellite being launched every week or every month kind of thing, right? So these opportunities are there. The bigger opportunity, I think, is what the government is focused on, which is making India, both the defense and in the space. Uh, so that where I think uh, scalable opportunity is there, and that is what the market is focusing on. So suddenly in the last six months, when people have started paying 20, 30 multiples to Defense stocks and to the railway stocks is predominantly because the action the government has taken, where order books has gone up, and it's a clear mandate that uh, we need to reduce the import bill, and that's what these companies are benefiting out of it. So instead of just focusing on ISRO or a small event, uh, the bigger pie the investors are looking forward is the defense space, where we want to, in, in, uh, you can say, reduce the import bill. And you said uh, 20, 30 times. I mean. Would you be comfortable uh, with this sort of a, you know, multiple band 20, 30 times? Would this be sensible according to you? If not, then what is a, let's say, sensible, reasonable multiple band for some of these defense plays? It's a start of an up cycle. So what happens in the up cycle, the violations are always on the higher side. But what will happen then on a low base, there'll be one to two years where the companies can double the profit. Suddenly, this 30p will look 15, and then 15p, then on a normalized 15% growth, will give you 15, 20% steady returns over the next three to four years. Since this is just the start of the cycle, I think 20 by 30 multiples are justified for now, uh, unless a company has already doubled the profit over the last one to two years, which very few companies have done. So they're all sitting at an order book. The next one to two years, profits are doubling, and this 30p will suddenly look 15p. And then we'll all justify that they can trade at 20 plus multiples. So for now, um, I'm okay with the kind of valuation these companies are. Okay. All right. Uh, got that, Aman. Uh, good speaking with you as always. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. You have a good weekend and we look forward to the next conversation. Quick break. On that note, we'll come back on the other side. Of course, as, as usual, all, uh, all the buzz and the chatter from the dealing rooms with Nimesh. And then we will have uh, Nimesh join in as well. Uh, uh, we'll have Mitesh join in for some technical calls.